So this is just a short recap and explanation of what blues is, how you play it, why it's useful and how you're going to get good at it. So, the first blues progression, blues chords progression that you'll see um, uses the chords A, D and E. And blues is basically a standard musical form, which means that it, it works according to an, a predictable template. So whilst there are some variations, you know that if somebody says, let's do a blues in A, you know what chords are going to be coming and how long it's going to last for. So one of the benefits of, there are loads of benefits to understanding this and being able to play it. One of the benefits is that you'll have ways of communicating with other musicians really easily. This is like something that you're going to know how to do and it means if you are jamming with some other people who it's something they're likely to know to you and it gives you an immediate way of interacting with them. So that's one benefit. Another benefit is that the standard blues form is like a template which lots and lots of pop and rock music and country music and even folk is related to or derived from. So once you've got a good understanding of that, there'll be loads of other songs that, that fit similarly. So just as an example, some tunes that have the pretty much the exact same chords as the 12 bar blues that we're about to look at would include um, Hound Dog by Elvis Presley and some Johnny Cash tunes. Um, so it's going to be very useful to you. So first of all, we're just going to look at the chord progression. You'll see there's a chord chart and it has uh, 12, 12 bars in it. And the first row is four bars of A. And it's going to play play any A, play this one. If you started playing top quite recently and you're on the three string chords, it's going to be that. If you are playing the bigger chords, it's like that. Do it with the bar chord. But then now I'm going to assume three string chords. So you've got bar of A, then you've got another bar of A, then you've got another bar of A, then you've got another bar of A, then you've got a bar of D, another bar of D, and then two more bars of A. So for now just make sure that the notated music is the same as what I'm playing. So now we're at the beginning of the third line and we've got an E, then we've got a D, then we've got an A, then we've got an E. So first A bar is pretty straightforward. That last bar, you, last line you might want to spend a bit longer on because the chords change more quickly. The last four bars are called a turnaround and that's because the music turns us around to go back to the top. Once we hear this, we're then ready to go back in with back to the top of our 12 bar blues and they can go round and round and round. They can be singing, they can be improvising. So the very first thing you want to do is to play along just hitting the chord on beat one of the bar. I would suggest spending a few minutes just going, just practicing swapping between the chords that are on the last line in the order that they come. So that's going to be two, three, four. Also break it down so that you're going you're doing a one minute practice some little changes between E to D and then A to D to A. So you're working on those movements separately. Um, if that's all, all good, you've got a number of different ways that you can play it next. So underneath there's gonna be three audios. Um, there's gonna be or at least three. There's gonna be one that just has guitar, like this. So that you can hear very clearly what's going on um, and you can depending where your chord changes are at you can change you can just hit the first beat of the bar you can hit the second, first and second it's so like one, two, three, four. or you can hit the third beat or you can hit all of them to begin with you might find that you lose count of how many four bars is don't worry that's totally normal what I'm going to do now is play and count it from the top all the way through. Um, you can either try and play along or you can just take a moment, count it 
count it out while I'm playing so that you're sure that you understand what's written down. So from the top, I'm going to go one, two, and three, and four, and one. just has guitar and counting and you can hear pretty clearly when the chords change when it's just guitar underneath that there's going to be a couple of other audio tracks that are in the same key but they have more instruments so I have bass and drums and piano it's exactly the same structure even if it's going at a different tempo but so you can still go one two three four or one or you can still play in the exact same way, but the backing is going to sound different. It might be like one, It might be arranged slightly differently, but it's still the exact same blues template. If that's confusing, just stick with the one that's just guitar. In time, you'll be able to kind of deal with playing your bit and there being things that are complementary but not identical happening at the same time. But um, if that's distracting you too much to start with, just stick with the one that's just guitar. As you get more experienced, you can go to the, the other audio tracks that have different instruments on them. It's kind of fuller sounding. Um, um, in time, you can also be doing some lead guitar. All of this kind of business, which is fun. Um, and you can, you can play this in a lot of different ways. You can also play bass notes. One, two. String, open D string, and open E string. Later on, there, there are other ways of playing those chords. That's kind of a more typical blues sound, and that's called a, a boogie woogie, and you're going to learn how to play that too. Um, so, there are loads of different ways of playing a blues according to that template, but um, using certain different approaches. To begin with, go for your A, D, and E. <laughs> 